Welcome along to Nantwich near Crewe. We're on location here at a Shawbrook Bank project and I'm joined by Gavin Seaholm from Shawbrook Bank. And Gavin, thank you so much for inviting us along, um, particularly to such a wonderful project. Tell us a little bit about the building we're standing in front of. Yeah, it's a really exciting project for Shawbrook to be involved in. We've been involved in it from quite early stages, from initiating the initial short-term uh, funding for the purchase uh, auction. Uh, we've now evolved that into funding for the refurbishment. As you can see, it's a large building. It's making way for 14 apartments and we're um, excited to be involved in that project with our client. And hopefully, but in the next nine months, once that project comes, we can come back and see it, finish the article, and then I think the long-term solution will be to put this onto a longer-term uh, financial product that we offer as well. Fantastic. No, it's a really fantastic building. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to talk to you about some of the trends that we see on property tribes and in the wider kind of financing uh, arena. Um, and one of the things is that um, people are always on the forum asking about how to scale up their business, how to grow, how to take on bigger and bigger projects. From the bank's perspective, what do you like to see? Is it baby steps? Yeah, I think there's an element of baby steps. I think there's an element of experience. Um, we understand the need for property investors to grow and evolve. Um, I liken it to riding a bike. You start off with stabilizers, then the stabilizers come off, you then buy a bike, motorbike, car, etc. And it's very similar for a property investor in that journey. Mm -hmm. However, there is pitfalls and sometimes running a bit quick mm -hmm. can have its um, challenges. Um, I think most lenders in the market like to see the experience and like to see that gradual journey piece mm -hmm. rather than jumping into something that may be a little bit too sort of a harder or too much of a scaling up to begin with. Um, so definitely experience is key. Also I think the main message as well is having the right people around you, you know, the right advice, anything from QSs, architects, maintenance, builders, tradespeople, everything involved in that, brokers to facilitate the funding as well. So it's, mm -hmm. it's it, that's the main part of it is to make sure you've got a good team around you would be my advice in that as well. And like you say, slowly and gradually grow your portfolio, for example, and move into different areas and projects. Mm, indeed. Now, clearly, we've seen the advent of the PRA um, in recent times. That has made a big difference. Um, you know, landlords are going to have to put in bigger deposits, uh, typically. Um, what's your overall view on uh, a kind of healthy loan to value across a, an entire portfolio? Yeah, so it's been interesting, actually, the journey piece for um, landlords with the PRA um, changes. We always implemented it at Shawbrook. Um, from a personal point of view, I think it's a good thing because leveraging is key and if you don't too leverage too high, so I think sort of 70-75% would be a sensible gear in there. Mm -hmm. um, having a mix of uh, properties in your portfolio, mm -hmm. so we talked about growth and the scaling. Commercial is obviously an opportunity, mm -hmm. a lot of people are seeing that, a lot of people are creating more y higher yielding properties as well. But um, the main key is to make sure you're leveraged sensibly, making sure that you um, can fit the new stress testing and the affordability mm -hmm. uh, standards that are set in place and then you should be well, uh, investors should be well placed for any challenges ahead, mm -hmm. rate rises etc and also the further tax implications. Mm -hmm. How useful do you think um, bridging finance is in the property uh, developer's toolbox? Because a project like this you mentioned bought at auction with bridging, um, it's, a, it's a very useful tool and obviously uh, in certain projects then it's got to be that kind of um, that finance anyway. Yeah, I think um, you talk about property professionals evolving, I think funding has evolved with them on that journey. Um, short term funding um, is, is key and essential to projects like we're here at now. You know, this was an auction purchase. Now, unless you have cash available, you will need to have short term funding. And I think a lot of specialist lenders, more so than high street lenders, are aware of that and that need for that to actually support borrowers and property investors in that journey. And that's where the short term funding space really does come to its own in a project similar to this. And you can actually continue to evolve that product set to help with the initial purchase, then with the refurbishment and so on. Absolutely. Another trend we've seen is obviously people are uh, in incorporating uh, to uh, mitigate the uh, effects of Section 24. And it's interesting to see how um, the, the actual uh, limited company products have actually become more competitive as well as obviously there's a much more demand for them. Yeah indeed I mean most um, property profile that we see now is via a limited company um, in that borrowing format purely because of obviously this is now being treated more of a business. Yeah. Um, you touched on obviously the, the benefits of having it as a limited company now. What you have to look at is legacy portfolios. Mm -hmm. Can you incorporate them into a limited company? What 
cost will be involved in that. Sometimes it may be actually better to stay as you are. So again, seeking specialist advice. Yeah. But the sort of the general sort of consensus is to, if you're going to continue to grow in this space as a property investor, then do it as a limited company. Uh, make sure you have all the correct SIC codes. But again, making sure you have the right advice because it's all well and good having it in a limited company. But you need to make sure that limited company can grow with the funding opportunities. And you're right, there's a lot more lenders offering limited company lending, which will just show how that is going to move forward going going ahead. Could you just elaborate a bit on the on the SIC code? Because it's important that when the limited company is set up, it uses the correct tax code. Is that that's right, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. So you have to have to make sure you have the right tax code in. Um, if you are treating this as a property business, property management has a specific code in. Um, buying and selling real estate has a, a specific code in. And you need to make sure your company has that correct code in because if you are running this as a business mm -hmm. and a property business, then um, HMRC will need to see the correct code in there. Mm -hmm. I think also. Um, at Property Tribes, we're very um, big fans of getting the right team around you. And I think, um, personally, I've always uh, really rated the importance of a good mortgage broker, somebody that I work with uh, over a long-term period, who knows me, who understands me, what I'm trying to do. I think it's, it's more important than ever now because certain banks have certain appetites. And, um, you know, just to go to a mainstream high street lender, they don't have an appetite uh, as much for these kind of more um, how can I say advanced projects do they they're, they're much more um, sort of run-of-the-mill type uh, projects so it's very important to have a broker that can find you the lender that's gonna have an appetite for what you're trying to do yeah I mean we touched on it earlier it's a very liquid market at the moment I mean there is over 2,000 buy to let products out there currently now that's quite a lot of knowledge to have now partnering up and teaming up with a specialist broker is key and we find that at Shawbrook having our strategic partners and broker partners is that as a distribution channel is key for any any property mm -hmm. professional because advice is key here you know you need to make sure you're getting the right advice and the right financial needs are being catered for with the right product yeah. um, you don't want that round peg square hole scenario where do you see uh, the main opportunities for landlords that, that want to grow beyond just a single occupancy buy to let portfolio yeah there's definitely a lot of opportunity out there at the moment um, HMOs are still a very um, wise investment, um, good yielding, um, obviously you need to have the experience in managing um, that type of property um, and asset class. There's also a good opportunity in commercial, um, you know, you still get stamp, to, uh, stamp duty is uh, keener, you get mortgage interest relief on that type of property asset. So we're seeing that come to the fore a bit more, um, whereas previously it was a bit more out of fashion, so to speak. Yeah. Also, we're seeing uh, projects similar to what we're at today, where people are actually building to rent and holding stock, yeah. and you're seeing that more and more going forward, where actually investors are keen to build and add the value and then move on to the next projects. Well, Gavin, it's, it's just very exciting times in, in the property sector and um, there are challenges, but I think that for those that look beyond the challenges, there's, there's definitely opportunity. Yeah, correct. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, there's a lot of funding to support the opportunity as well uh, for ourselves and various other lending channels as well. I think the main thing for um, investors at the moment is to make sure you get the right education as well in the current climate. There's a lot of change. Um, there's a lot of specialist advice required. So my advice currently would be to look at your projects, make sure you get the right advice and make sure you're well versed and educated on them projects. Well, here, here. That's a very positive note to end on. Thank you so much for inviting us along Pleasure. here in Nantwich and thank you also, as always, to Shawbrook Bank for its support of property tribes and landlord education. <laughs>